Okay, we're recording. So I did put the Nearpod link in the chat. So just right there. So for those that haven't got on it yet, if you wouldn't mind, it'd be great because we're going to do a little bit of collaboration on it. So hopefully we can get a little bit more than two people. Uh, but let's start going, okay? So just so you're aware, this lesson is being recorded for learning purposes. Uh, the classroom expectations, one, make sure you're following them not long with the Nearpod lesson. If you're using the chat tool respectfully and appropriately, appropriately. And then we're responding to questions and instructions the first time. Okay, so today's lesson, what we're going to do, we're going to be going over uh, technology in the classroom. Um, like the integration of technology and teaching and, and how it's kind of evolved over time. And, this is something that's really changing uh, the whole world of education. Um, technology as, long as, as well as our world, right? But uh, with those changes, we have to make changes in, in teaching and how things work and everything like that. And this class, I guess, is a great example of that because what this is a virtual class, right? You know, probably even, I'd say 15, 20 years ago, probably didn't have the capability of having an online class where we have a live class and then um, things like that. So this is relatively new and we're learning as we go. So real quick, uh, just so everybody's aware, I do post the recordings right here to uh, the announcements. If we go to the plan portion, we will have, as you can see, live class every Thursday. The assignments that I do, which are basically the exit tickets, they are due at the um, end of class, so we have a uh, lesson for quiz that we'll be doing this week, as well as lesson for assignment. Uh, just to mention, no school on the 20th, okay? Monday the 20th, which won't affect anything. End of the block is the 17th. I do have the skills cert test set up for Thursday the 16th. So that's just where you can take a test to see how you do on the, the course. I'll be setting those up um, and give you more information in the next week or two. Okay, as we hit content, uh, as you can see right here, we have unit ones, one to six. We're on unit four right now. Technology in the classroom. Um, and we have the Nearpod link there and I will post the, the video there, okay? So I will be going over the quiz and the assignment at the very end of class, but let's get into our uh, lesson real quick. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna watch a quick video and you actually really don't need audio to actually see this, which is kind of good because I know some of the, sometimes the audio cuts out a little bit, but it's just a timeline of how technology has changed throughout uh, time, okay? in the classroom. So I'm gonna push play here and we'll get going. The history of technology in education. Let's begin.
está viejo y mozo. All right, we're gonna stop it right there. But you can see over the time things have changed where now we have so many interactive things that are going on. Um, everybody is almost having like one-to-one -one technology uh, on them. A lot of people have uh, schools give out, you know, computers or Chromebooks or all types of things like that. Um, but what is like technology is the use um, of any of these kind of things, like where we have the computer, internet, software applications, CD-ROM, digital cameras, video cameras, uh, tablets, mobile phones, all of these things. And we're getting more and more, as more and more technology comes out, the more integrated we are into learning um, with these, right? And I would even say, you know, little things like, uh, you know, YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff. So many people are self-learning through all of that kind of stuff. And that's something we need to kind of take into consideration. Okay, so why technology integration, okay? Um, there's a lot of things that, what we're competing with, at least teachers on a teacher perspective, is, for example, hopefully you didn't hear this, but my kids barely just came in the room. And of course, they were playing on a tablet, right? They're playing different games. And a lot of these electronic games are super engaging to kids. And they're basically addicting, right? Um, but how can teachers gravitate to, to help shape kids to learn instead of maybe just play some mindless games, right? You know, some games are built in, um, which we'll kind of talk a little bit about uh, like personalized systems systems of instructions where there are games and you're learning at the same time, which is great. But being able to use it as an engagement and interest tool to kind of help out because the you know these devices are really engaging. The next one is be able to help uh, get like a framework for curriculum. So we're teaching all of the same kind of stuff in each grade level all the way across the country. Um, also, we know that in the workplace for future skills and stuff like that, that technology is going to continue to be important. I would say 100% of the people almost that are at work, well, I wouldn't say 100, maybe like 99% of the people that work are going to have to use some type of computer or technology in their, their field of work. So to, you, to learn those like digital literacy skills are super important. So now it kind of comes to like, how can we incorporate uh, technology? So we need to make technology accessible and available. You know, that's why there's so many actually like grants and stuff out there that schools get to pay for technology. Um, allow technology tools to support the curricular um, goals and help students effectively reach those goals. Um, incorporate students' use of technology in meaningful activities in the lesson. 
So um, I know like when I was in the brick and mortar classroom, I would use this thing called um, AirPlay. And so I had like an iPad and I was able to go on there and I was able to mirror what was on my iPad on the screen. And I was able to walk around the classroom and mirror that. And I could even, you know, just hand that off to a kid to say, hey, figure out this math problem or something like that. So you can make it engaging like that. Um, key components of learning, they'll have active engagement, group participation, frequent interaction, feedback, and connects to real world experiences. So we talked about the benefits, okay? Uh, one is they can engage and motivate learners, keep them focused for lo longer periods of time, make students more excited to learn, enable students to learn at their own pace, and be able to cater to different learning styles. Uh, another way is they can support new approaches to teaching and learning, like encourage cooperative learning. Uh, cooperative learning is like learning together, like in groups, right? Uh, developing problem solving and higher level skills. There's a really cool program out there that um, you have to actually work as a team. Uh, it's called Infinity D and you have to work as a team to make a mission and you're working on problem solving and higher level skills. Uh, encourages self-learning and also caters to multiple intelligence or different learning styles. Uh, some benefits, links learners to learning tools. Um, also information, so you can get information at the, so, I mean, when I had to go through school, we had to go into the library and look things up in the encyclopedia if we wanted to know something like that. So the effort to be able to find it online is so much easier and we're able to have that at our fingertips. Uh, and also tracks the learner's progress, which is really good. And also has visual tools and everything like that that works. But there are some things that would need to be developed um, such as technology literacy so technology literacy is basically how you use the computer, how you work it correctly, um, how you use it appropriately. Uh, information literacy, uh, there's a lot of bias out there. So meaning somebody's trying to promote their political agenda or their social agenda or something like that. So you need to think, be able to decipher what's true and what's not. Um, also vis visual literacy, um, being able to create things like PowerPoint presentations, uh, Prezi's videos, right? Um, and they can use all of that stuff. And that's what you'll need to do in the future, okay? Uh, how can teachers help? They help by producing interesting and diverse student-friendly materials, uh, make teaching interesting and fun, and give access and more information and ideas. Okay, some different ways, uh, meeting the curriculum goals, technology enables methods of learning uh, to evaluate, integrate available materials into learning process to access, create, and share knowledge. And I think that's one of the biggest things. If, if we look at um, Bloom's taxonomy, which we looked at, was it last time that we went over education philosophies? But the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy is creating, right? And so technology allows you to be able to create more and be able to get on that higher level of, of learning and thinking. Because when you create things, that's when you're doing the highest level. So there are some pitfalls or some failures of, of things. And we're going to talk about some other ones uh, about technology. But sometimes there's just too much information, right? And that needs to be kind of narrowed down into certain aspects. Uh, the inability to choose all the relevant information, okay, because there's so much out there. The overemphasis on information rather than investigation. So you're just so consumed about the information that you, you're not thinking through things and investigating it. Uh, passive learning instead of active learning. So instead of really trying to find something, right, you just Google the answer or something like that. Uh, technology becomes a replacement for the hands-on experience. Um, I think it's really important still to be able to communicate and work with others 
personally in person in collaborative groups. Um, and then also uh, technology replacing a teacher, right? Um, that's why we need a teacher to lead and, and create the environment. So you got to get creative uh, in how to use technology and use it prudently. But I got a question for all of you that we want to put up here. Um, the question is, is one of posts, uh, what technology do you like to use, uh, like to use in your schooling? Okay. So this could be when you were in a classroom, what did you use? Uh, one of the schools I kind of work for, they, all of them have like 3d printers in their schools, which is really cool. Right. Um, some other really cool things are out there technology wise. All right. So somebody said you like to use your phone. Okay. And there, there's some things on there where that you can actually play like game games on your phone and be interactive um, on there. So somebody says like to use Google. Okay. The computer. read through books and Google answers. Okay. Perfect. It's good. And the, the cool thing is they have like efficiency, right? Like this does help us, this technology helps us get things done faster. Right. And which is fantastic, but we want to make sure we still are um, critical thinking, thinking through things. Um, somebody said K 12, right? So like, the classrooms, how we, we set them up, uh, Demos and Nearpod. Yeah, I think all of those things really kind of give our good aids. Um, YouTube's a big one, right? Or something that's like audio visual to help you learn things as you, you're learning from other people. So I, I think there's, there's going to be more and more technology. It's going to change and it's going to get more effective and, and better for us. <laughs> Okay, there's some key terms that you I need to go over with you um, when we come to what we're supposed to teach you. And there also will be in your uh, your quiz today, okay? So adaptive learning, okay? Adaptive learning or adaptive teaching is delivered of a custom learning experience that addresses the unique needs of an individual through just in time feedback, pathways and resources rather than providing a one size fit all learning experience. Okay. So adaptive learning. Okay. And technology does a really good job of this, especially on programs. I don't know if people use programs like Lexia or um, what's some math ones. Uh, Alex is a math one that kind of goes at your pace. IXL. Um, all of those things kind of go to where you are at your learning ability and adapts to your learning. Um, so that's kind of thing. You hate Alex. <laughs> yeah, I know quite a few people that don't like it <laughs> either. <laughs> um, some other things we talked about dangers and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, chill, uh, SIPA is what's called. It's a children's internet protection act. Uh, the children's internet protection act was, uh, was enacted by Congress in 2000 to address the concerns about children's access to obscene or harmful content on the internet. Now, there are, the internet's great. There's so much information going out there, but there's also what people would call obscene and harmful content to children. And so the the schools are putting, you know, things on their computer to try to to prevent that but it is a policy that we are trying to um, keep kids safe and keep them in a framework of school activity rather than something that may be um, maybe bad. Okay. So that's something that you got to think about if you were in education and a, a teacher. Um, as they do that, they go over all schools have what's called a AUP or acceptable use policy. Um, your parents, and possibly you probably had to assign this before you could gain access to technology, right? And so what it is, it's a document stipulating constraints and practices that the user must agree to for the access to um, court, to the network, um, to the internet and other resources 
Uh, many business and educational institutions require employees or students to sign the AUP uh, before granting um, basically network ID. And so that's just um, in accordance with that uh, SIPA, right? To that's just saying that you're not going to look up bad stuff, right? You're gonna you're gonna stay within the confines that you should be um, as a student and not go into those darker sides of the internet. Okay. All right, especially on those uh, those things. Okay, that leads us to the very end here. Um, let me just go over the quiz with you real quick. Um, what they will be, be, everything that we went over, okay? What is technology integration, okay? Um, I think that one's pretty easy. What are the benefits of technology integration? Okay, so you might wanna look back at some of the Nearpod there and, and see what those are. Uh, what is not a benefit of technology integration, okay? Um, adaptive learners, okay? Well, that was at the very end what we kind of talked about, okay? Uh, adaptive learning, yep. And then the the SIPA, which we just talked about, as well as the AUP, okay? So that's what your quiz will be on. Your assignment is to um, go and find an educational technology program that you have not used before and just describe it in a paragraph of what it does, right? So there's so many different programs out there that that are available and you just need to do that, submit it, and then you're done, okay? All right, uh, this is lesson number four under unit number four, right here. Okay, that leads us to the very end, guys. I'll stop the recording, but I'll stay after and answer any questions that you may have. Um, but I appreciate you guys coming and let me know if you have any questions.